Hey guys, really quick before we get into today's video, we're giving away a $25 bond to one lucky winner. All you gotta do to enter is like the video and leave your near reality in-game name down below. What's going on guys, it's Vidic here, we are back on Near Reality with my series where I start as a level 3 noob and transform into a maxed PKing account which way we can feast upon the wilderness. So far in the series we have abused two methods, the first was doing the 10th slayer task on Cresselia for a crazy amount of points, patched, and then we were using our dwarf multi cannon on demonic gorillas for insanely fast and efficient kills which also sadly got patched before I could even get my Zenite. Still got all these cannonballs though, but I guess that means it's time to do things a little bit more legitimately. The cannon made it so we didn't need our Dragon Defender, but now it's probably the most important upgrade we can get, and I'm not gonna grind it out with this little D-Skimmy. The whip is only 1 out of 200, and we can actually kill the entire room of these Abyssal Demons with burst spells at the same time. I bring runes for Ice Burst, and then also some Blood Runes for Blood Burst so we can heal ourselves. I got some knives from the range store which lets us quickly aggro all the abyssal demons onto us and then to stack them onto each other we found a little corner to run around to if you didn't know this strat it's used pretty much everywhere in the catacombs where you can do bursting you move back and forth as fast as you can and all of them end up on the same square look at that how handy this of course means our burst spells will hit all of them at the same time you can see i'm wearing proselyte you don't need magic boosting gear here it gives us good prayer bonus and just enough defense to where we barely take any damage and there we go, after 38 kills, we got the Abyssal Whip. Easy as that. I probably should have done this earlier. And now to the Warriors Guild, everybody's favorite minigame. Brought in the Rune Armor to animate. We got a little Strength Pots. We got our Prayer Potions so we can use Offensive Prayers and do this as quick as possible. Nobody wants to spend too much time in the Warriors Guild. But I started slaying Cyclopses and the Defenders started rolling in. Bronze, Iron, Steel, Black. Took a little break from this because there was a Xamphor spawn. And hey, this is a good use of all those cannonballs I have in the bank. You can actually set up cannons here and hit the boss with them. Now you might see this little spot I got marked right here. This is a really good place to set it up because it'll actually double hit the boss. The other guy's cannons aren't double hitting. Noobs. That's because the tile of the boss, as you can see, lines up with the dwarf multi-cannons double hit spots. So if you want to cannon the boss too, make sure you mark this tile right here. Nothing too good from this guy yet. We also had another Xamphor earlier, but nothing good from that one either. We got our Myth Defender, Addy Defender, and finally the Rune. Which of course means we can now come down to the higher level Cyclops in the basement and get our Dragon Defender and finally be done. And there it is. This definitely didn't take too long. Definitely one of my faster Defender grinds. Defender? <laughs> ah, and like I said, today is all about upgrades. If we can't make our account powerful through exploits, then I guess we gotta do it the old fashioned way. Picked up a torso from the blood money shop because that's another upgrade we've been needing. It's fire cape time. Woohoo! It's been a long time since I've done a fire cape. And usually you just go straight to Jad. Kill Jad, get your fire cape, and move on. But on New Reality, lucky for us, we get to do the last 30 rounds. I can't remember the last time I did any round besides just Jad, but I really want this fire cape, so we busted out the black D hide and the rune crossbow to make our way there. I mainly just hung around the boot, I bet there's like better strategies for certain wave sets and such to take less damage, but this is all I remember from years ago, the boot. It took a little while to get there, our setup is not necessarily strong, but we finally got to Jad. I was a little bit nervous because I know he can hit you off screen and you don't know what attack he uses unless you use your sound. So I did have my sound on, but luckily he came right up here to the rock, we were able to see his first attack. And then from then on, it was pretty easy. Just keep praying against his different attacks, depending on what he does. I couldn't possibly mess this up, right? Healers spawn at 50 HP. We put on long range, run around and aggro all of them. Go back to our spot so they line up nicely and only one of them can attack us. Make sure your prayer runs out so you get chance and almost waste 40 minutes of your time. But recover well and then get our fire cape. There we go. I'm so happy to be done with that. Now at this point, I remembered whips were going for about 10 mil and I could really use some cash for supplies and upgrades. We got our first whip in like 40 kills with this crazy multi strat, so I figured maybe just do it for another hour, get a couple more whips, make some good money. And we got a little totem building up here so we can fight Skatizo. Got our second whip here, this one took a little bit longer but still under the drop rate at about 110 more kills. Another good part about these Abyssal Demons is we get some decent alcohols, herbs, clue boxes, and also resource drops. Sometimes it'll just drop us 
a bunch of high level bolts like these dragonstone bolts that's going to be super useful for later we also got some ruby bolts at some point also lining these guys up can be a little bit annoying sometimes they do teleport you around them so sometimes when you're trying to run around this corner they're just constantly moving you away and it gets really annoying i just wanted to complain about that i feel like the strat's really nice otherwise but sometimes they'd be teleporting me around for like 15 seconds while i was trying to get them stacked up another reason i decided to grind these guys out we finally got some ancient shards two of them these are going to be really nice later we're not quite there yet but trust me they all fit into the grand scheme another zam for here and also i came up with a pretty cool strat the boss has a special where hands will start falling from the sky on top of you and you basically just got to continuously walk around so they don't hit you so when that happens people are kind of just walking around the arena not doing damage to the boss but if you mark these corners around the boss you can actually just walk around her and continuously do damage even when the hands are falling on your head it's kind of like what you do on tecton or verzik but i thought it was just kind of cool little sweaty technique i would show you guys now i was really happy about getting lucky at abyssal demons but doing them for another hour brought me up to exact drop rate of getting two whips so i was lucky at first seems like i spent too much time here and i just got average luck until 10 kills later we got another abyssal whip we're, we're lucky again we're back into the rng at this point i saw a wilderness vault spawn and i had not tried one of these yet so i geared up in some range gear nothing crazy because we do have to go into the wilderness some super stores and a bunch of sharks luckily the entrance of this one was right above edgeville ditch sometimes it can be super deep wieldy even in multi so you got to be careful now it seems like the strategy here is to go into the southwest corner because all these stone angels will spawn and this will allow people with barrage to freeze them all into the same area stuff gets hectic pretty quickly i think next time i'll probably bring barrage to help out myself and then the angel of death spawns now as you start damaging her these stone angels will spawn and make their way to her if they get to her they will heal which is another reason to have more people barraging but it seems like they only do this a couple times so once they're done spawning you can just keep dpsing out the boss and then when she's dead you can make your way over to the south and open up the chest can we get lucky on our first one let's see not lucky completing the skulls you as well and tele blocks you so remember if you're in deep wilderness be very careful maybe wait a little bit before you exit and now it's time to sell our extra two whips for some big gp and here comes a massive mistake on my part some of you may have noticed this earlier when i was looking up offers for the abyssal whips not only was i looking at the buying offers but i was only looking at the top number which was the total amount of all of the whips being bought they just happened to all line up with 10 mil pretty closely so i didn't notice that they were actually buying them for about one and a half to two mil i thought we were making a bunch of money and we were still making a little bit but i probably would have just left after my first whip if i realized this so i listed them for just under three mil these will probably sell nicely and we will have six mil at least after this i was really annoyed mainly at myself so i needed to cool down a little bit and hey we got a bunch of clue scrolls in the bank the odds of getting rares on new reality clue scrolls are much higher so i figure we can get some nice stuff and they also have less steps as well some of them are really easy we just got to come over to this lady in falador park and play her a little song and then some of them are just ooh, that's a stole and a heraldic rune shield don't have any of those it's gonna be too hard to buy from another player so we, we just drop these ones for now we'll get some of these items through other clue scrolls later but for now we just do a little reset there is a clue scroll helper which is really nice it'll show you how to get to the spot if you look at your map you can like zone in on it it'll tell you what fairy ring to take tell you if you got a boss like the ceradoman wizard and there we go our first casket we only had to complete two clues for this one and uh, not too great i'll take the alcables though complete a quick puzzle for another one and ooh, we actually get an ancient page from this that'll actually make us an untradeable mage book which is really good because we won't have to risk it in the wilderness next clue not too great these clues taking me all over the map this one we had to go to keldegrim for thank fuck they have the puzzle solving plugin as well i would not be doing these otherwise another clue and a guthics page nothing to see here two zami pages also not bad that's a decent book and our first actually good item we got armadillo dehyde boots these are our best ranger boots now they also have prayer bonus 
We'll basically be using these until we have Pegasians, which are best in slot. Now, this step was really annoying, but I didn't want to drop this clue because it was one more until we completed it. We were able to buy the Amulet of Power from a shop, but we had to make a diamond ring. Ew. This was pretty easy though, we just did a little bit of mining and smithing to get up our levels. Got a gold bar, a diamond, and a ring mold, made a diamond ring. Ended up getting another step anyway, and a dog shit reward. And then I figured we saw this little elite clue in the bank. Maybe we can get lucky and have no hard steps. One on Zaya, one at Pisca really a Piscatorius fishing colony. And then we needed a lava battle staff, and there's no good sources of getting one of these, so never mind. We tried out another one though, and I ended up getting this light puzzle. Oh, oh no. I have no clue what I'm doing with this. I'm just clicking random buttons and things are happening. I'm guessing we had to fill up all of the lights. I looked it up on the wiki and there wasn't a great like guide explaining how it works, but there was a brute force method where you just input a long string of different letters and it will force it to be completed at some point. This is my kind of monkey brain strat and hey, it actually ended up working so we didn't have to put any thought into it. Got our first elite casket. I'm hoping for something good from this one and we get uh, nothing, not good. Nope. All right, we did a bunch of hard clues. We did an elite clue. It's time to talk to Watson over here and make ourselves a master clue. You can do this by just having an easy, medium, hard, and elite. He'll give you a master one, and these can have the best rewards. Got a light box from Radimus Urkel. Once again, I brute forced it. And here, I forgot to reset my camera, so you guys can enjoy that. Had to go fight these ancient trio wizards on Zaya near the Lizardman Shamans. And then this last step felt like it was just meant to be. Equip an Abyssal Whip in front of the Abyssal Demons. Come on, what are the odds of that? I just know this clue scroll ward is gonna be really good. Go back to Sherlock. He gives us our casket. Oh, what is it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Yep, that's it for today. That's an instant log out right there. That's going to do it for today's episode here on Near Reality, guys. I hope you enjoyed. We did get some really important items. We got our whip, we got our defender, and our fire cape, and the clue scrolls weren't all bad. We got some pages, and my favorite were those Armadil Dehyde boots. Those are really sick. So I'm definitely going to be holding on to those. Stay tuned for next episode, because I'm going to be focusing completely on money making. We've got almost all the untradables we need now, and it's time to supplement our bank. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please like it if you did. Subscribe to my channel if you want to with more videos. And have a nice day.